Go ahead. Mm. Woo! Nothing's happening. No, seriously, seriously, seriously. I hate it when a woman's beard is longer than mine. I, I really, I don't like that. When you go in, you have to be circumcised. <laughs> and if you go back out, they'll cut your head off. So either way, in or out, you're getting cut up. Do Muslims have to grow the beard? Do Muslims have to grow the beard? How many say yes? How many say no? How many say I don't really care? No, wait a minute. Do Muslims have to grow the beard? Not all of them. Not the women. No, seriously, seriously, seriously. I hate it when a woman's beard is longer than mine. I really, I don't like that. Call it beard envy. I don't know, but I don't like it. It's really bad. Do Muslim men, I got it now. Do Muslim men have to grow the beard? Yes. No, they don't. They can't. Who can grow their beard? Stand up and grow it. Go ahead. <laughs> Hurry. Stand up and grow your beard. Grow ahead. Mm. Woo! <laughs> Nothing's happening. Who grows the beard? Who grows the plants? Who grows the trees? Allah. Right? So it's a law that's growing it. You don't have to do anything. Except quit cutting it off after he grows it. <laughs> Is it an order in Islam for you to leave your beard alone? Yes. That order comes in Sahih Bukhari. And the Quran tells us to obey the Prophet. They told me when I came to Islam, somebody who's was not Muslim, he told me, you don't want to get in that... They're going to cut you up. When you go in, you have to be circumcised. <laughs> and if you go back out, they'll cut your head off. So either way, in or out, you're getting cut up. The best of the best of the Christian Catholic women become nuns. That's considered as good as you can get in their religion. In their religion, if she wants to be a good woman, she has to be a nun. And being a nun means she doesn't get married. <laughs> how many husbands can she have? None. And how many children can she have? And how many grandchildren she can have? Now you know why she's a nun. I don't know. I, I wasn't a Catholic. Just trying to figure it out. But the best of the best of their women, this is not a joke, man. When they enter into it, they tell them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, and put the ring right there and tell them that they're married to God. That's what they tell them. And I, one of them was talking to me about it. I said, really? You're married to God. And you have a problem. And I said, wait a minute. All of you women are married to him? He said, yeah. I said, and you got a problem with us with four wives. <laughs> Ajib. This is amazing. Good luck, gods, you know. The kind you carry in your pocket. You need something, you whip it out. Hey, hey, got my lucky God. You heard about that, right? Guys wear these bracelets and things like that's going to cure them or give them something. And they got lucky bracelet, lucky ring, lucky uh, horseshoe. Lucky horseshoe. You heard about that? Where they, some, by the way, some societies over the centuries believed that if you put a horseshoe over the door, it was good luck. I always wonder what would happen if you slammed the door and it fell down. The guy, he wouldn't think it was very good luck, would he? 
And what about the rabbit's foot? Have you ever heard about the good luck rabbit's foot? People used to carry those. When I was a kid, they had keychains that had this piece of a real rabbit's foot hanging on it. And then you'd be like, you'd go start the car and you look at that dangling foot. And I would think, how was that lucky for the rabbit? <laughs> you know, here goes Easter Bunny. He's on crutches going, hey, it wasn't lucky for me. 